What is going on here? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, the Corvette is still on a lift. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we actually get this car off the lift and get it driving. I need to schedule a dyno date, but we've got a couple more projects that I want to get done before I even start talking with PCM and get this thing tuned. So there are going to be two points for today's video. The first is an oil leak. I can't confirm I have this oil leak, but I suspect that I do. When the E4 supercharger first came out, they provided a very thin milled valley cover plate. They were basically cast incorrectly or they were milled too far down. I don't know what depth was incorrect, whether it was the milling or the casting or a combination of both of those. But basically the very early valley cover plates all leaked oil. And when I took my supercharger off the car last year for the throttle body install and the tear down and as well as porting out this supercharger snout, I noticed oil in the valley cover plate. Now I can't say that the oil did not come from the supercharger itself because as you guys know I've had hell of a time with ventilation on this car with uh, blowing out rear main seals, catch can setups and uh, PCD issues. You know, we've had a bunch of trouble with this car. The, the SS, thankfully we haven't. I took the supercharger off and there was oil just sitting like literally on top of the valley cover plate. So that's the first issue. The second issue is actually what we were just talking about, ventilation. This car with this E4 supercharger does not have crankcase ventilation coming out of the valley port. Unfortunately, Edelbrock eliminated that port when they provided you that thin new casting and milled valley cover plate. So I am unable to utilize any of the factory PCD stuff. Like it all had to be custom. And uh, I had those Holly valve covers. Those, <laughs> those had no uh, PCD restrictions in it. So that was literally sucking oil through the blower, through, from the valley cover into the supercharger. I added a catch can and I was filling that catch can within 15 or 20 minutes of driving. So that wasn't a solve. Then the third thing I finally did was I added a check valve between the supercharger and the catch can on the inlet. So basically no motor oil would get sucked into the catch can and it, would, and it wouldn't go into, back into the supercharger. So that was kind of my solution. Then we eventually added this Elite Engineering clean side catch can, if that's what you want to call it. Guess what? When we were swapping the 102 millimeter throttle body between both cars, I still found oil inside the supercharger. So I was like, okay, so we still have a ventilation problem. And as you guys know, I also blew the rear main seal out last year when we were installing the clutch. So I, you know, like I said, over three or four years, we've had nothing but problems with this PCV setup. So the part that we're gonna install today is gonna to solve both of those problems you know, the ventilation as well as the oil leak problem. So let's go ahead and show you what we got. So here's what we have. We actually have a brand new valley cover plate that has the ventilation tube on it that's needed. And here's the part number from Elrbrock. It's 24-15918. Now this valley cover is again, one of those parts that you can't order directly from Edelbrock. You have to go through a third party supplier. Try to order it through Summit Racing. Second place you can order this is Jags. Okay, Jags actually has this part number in their system and they can order it. However, their price kind of blows. They wanted over $300 for this plate. It's like, eh, okay. And then the third place they called was Superchargers Online. They are a online distributor for Edelbrock and every other basically Eaton, you know, Magnuson, whatever you want to call it. And I got this plate ordered. And it took probably two weeks for this plate to come which was kind of, I mean, they said it would be seven to 14 days. It was over 14 days, but that wasn't, that was not Supercharger Online's problem. That was Edelbrock because Edelbrock had to either manufacture this or they had to take it out of an existing kit. I don't know. But Superchargers Online had this for $220, I think, shipped. Something like that. I think it was 200 Then shipping was like 20 bucks, something like that. So Superchargers Online was the best place to get this. So how is this plate going to help our ventilation problem? Well, as you guys can see, there's a very small hole drilled right there into the plate. And on the other side of that plate is a PCV hose tube assembly, whatever you want to call it. Basically, this tube assembly connects to that hole and will allow your crankcase ventilation to escape and get 
you know, route it into your catch hands, your check valves, whatever set, setup you got. So this valley cover is actually stock for the LS3 dry sump as well as the LS7 dry sump supercharger kits. I just wish that Edel Rock had provided that valley cover plate for everyone because as you guys know, I've had nothing but oiling issues with this car with the supercharger kit. And I think that valley cover plate is part of it. So, all right guys, we're about to pull the supercharger. I just want to show you the progress that we've made. You guys will see that I have the fuel rail disconnected. I have the injectors all removed. The coil packs are gone. Those are over there. The injectors are over here. And you guys can kind of see, I made like a Y. So like all the wiring, all the coolant hoses, all the fuel rails is kind of in, in a Y shape. And uh, that's just so that I can get in there, disconnect any hardware that I need to, and uh, we'll be able to pull up the supercharger. All right guys, the supercharger is loose. I've already moved it around a little bit. And uh, what we're gonna try to do is lift this up. And if I have to, I have this ABS plastic. These are from the uh, belly pans that we've been making. It's ABS. I've got this thick moving blanket and then I've got two fender covers all under this. So if I have any problems, I should be able to grab it, put it down, grab it again, put it over here. Back behind me, I've got a stool with a hard piece of Delrin plastic that's roughly the size of the blower and set it down. So this might suck, but let's, uh, let's just go ahead and try to get this out. checking the fender I think we're safe all right so as you guys can see I have literally oil in every cylinder that is kind of crazy all right guys I know you weren't expecting a driving vlog part of this episode but last night I was trying to remove the bolts from the valley cover plate and I got them all out except for one and that last bolt, the head of it stripped inside the valley cover plate. So as you guys can see here, the five millimeter hex socket is just spinning inside the bolt. So, so we're headed up to Ray City Steel to pick up some more welding supplies. I believe it is a E70S TIG welding filler rod. It's basically a generic steel filler rod and uh, that's what we're gonna need. Because the only welding rod that I have right now is for aluminum. And I obviously need to get, you know, other supplies. Alright guys, we're back home now. And you guys can see we have a whole bundle of new welding rods. And this is some 332nd ER70S-6. Uh, so this will allow us to use our TIG welder and TIG weld that broken bolt to a broken socket. And hopefully we're able to get that whole setup removed from the car. <laughs>
All right guys, you just saw us try to use all these tools behind me to try to get that stuck bolt out. We used the TIG welder, that failed miserably. It heated the bolt up nice and well, made it glowing, but it didn't budge. We tried the MIG welder. That was not very successful either. I had problems trying to get the bolt, I'm sorry, the bolt and the nut to fuse together. The last time I had the welder turned all the way up, this welder, I changed the thickness to quarter inch of material and I, I made it all the way high. I think it was 24 volts or something like that, which I believe is the max for this welder. Made it nice and hot. It glowed for a long time and it took a while to cool down. Then I applied heat to the area. I have a, just a standard little benzomatic propane torch. Use that. Heated it up. Okay. Then with that warmed, with the welder warming it up and all that, the bolts should be nice and, and loose. I got probably, oh, I don't know, half a turn on it, and then the bolt broke right off again. So the nut did not adhere to the top of the bolt. I'll show you what I mean. As you guys can see, we still have a nub kind of sticking up from where the nut was welded and tried to fuse to that metal. And then we tried the drill bit routine. You know, so I put a drill bit on it, put it in reverse. I tried my easy out set. Yeah, that didn't work. Hopefully the last and final way of fixing this problem is with two items that you go pick up at Walmart. First item is gonna be from the cooking section. It is called a loom. Potassium aluminum sulfate, and we're gonna use this to try to dissolve the actual bolt. And the last part we're gonna need is some Silly Putty. This is just available at your local grocery store. And uh, what we need this for is actually create a dam around the piece. So what we're gonna do is use Silly Putty and create like, I don't know, maybe a half inch high perimeter around this bolt and that way that Illuminix doesn't get anywhere else on the block, you know, and so that hopefully it doesn't damage anything. All right guys, we have our Illum and water mix and uh, a Silly Putty dam around the bolt. So this Illum water mix is supposed to help dissolve ferrous metals supposed to not damage aluminum or anything like that. So hopefully if I leave this for a few hours, leave it overnight, hopefully it makes a dent in it. I mean, at this point, I just want something to help budge this thing loose. I, you know, I've tried heat, I've tried welding, I've tried drill bits and nothing so far has worked. If this just helps get part of the threads loose or helps dissolve the top of the bolts, you know, so that I can get the plate off, yeah, that'd be great, but I don't know. So we will catch up with this and uh, see what we end up doing. All right, guys, the Illum Chemical Dissolve didn't do anything. I think it's just, it just was too cold over here overnight, and all that was left was the like chemical compound, the little salt-looking crystals. So I wiped all that stuff off, and I've been out here all afternoon trying to get this bolt undone. If you guys want to see something, look what's going on. The bolt is finally loose. How did we do that? <laughs> Guys, I tried two different mechanical bolt extractors. I used a Craftsman kit. That kit actually didn't even fit, so that was too small. I ended up buying another grab it. This is called the speed out kit. That actually grabbed onto the bolt, but the bolt had so much torque on it that as soon as I started twisting it, it caught, it tried to move, but then the, the metal just stripped out. And I went through literally all four bits. This is a mix of the Craftsman. I went through all four bits on that. That didn't work. So I was like, all right, what the hell am I gonna do now? So I considered dremeling the entire uh, bolt kind of like into sections and try to get the remains of the bolt out after I got the plate off. But I, I was gonna do one more thing. You guys may recognize this socket. That socket is actually that cut down hex bit that kind of started this whole project like several months ago. I'll have a video to that link up above. And uh, so since that socket was just laying around and I had cut the tip off, you know, the end of it off so that I could try to get the water pump bolts out. I'm like, you know what? Let's try to just weld that to the bolt. So what I ended up doing was actually taking that bit, which was still in the hex shape, I used the Dremel and just shaved down the ends to make it more round. I drilled out the top of the bolt as far as I could. Then I grabbed my mini sledgehammer and I hit that thing as hard as I could. And I got the 
broken bit, the shave down bit, kind of stuck on the top of the pole. I was like, all right, well, we've got good penetration. Now I may have been actually able to take that bolt out right then and there, but you know what? The welder literally was feet for me. So I just set it up, I ground it out, I welded the bolt to the broken bit, to that shave down bit. And uh, then I heated it with a torch. My torch is right here. Just gave it a little bit of heat for, I don't know, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, it wasn't that long. Long enough to see the metal to start sweating a little bit, which is a little weird, but you know, just applying a little bit of heat to it. And uh, to cut the torch off, I went and grabbed my 3.8 socket and the bolts just started spinning right out. Now I did have to apply a little bit of a pressure to it, but finally we got the damn bolt out. I've been working on this thing for probably two weeks. I didn't think about welding a broken bit to the actual bolt. Here is the old original plate. So I transferred the O-ring gaskets that are on the top here from here over to here. They're all in the same spots. Also, another thing that I noticed was if you guys look, it looks like they have the extra webbing here for the active fuel management or displacement on demand systems that come on the automatic Camaros. So it's kind of a little weird to see that on the Corvette because I thought all of the Corvette plates were uh, flat because as you guys can see, this is an LS3 kit from a couple years ago and it's flat and there's no extra casting marks in it. So that's just something a little, little, little something to notice. So now we've got the O-rings installed. We also are gonna install a new GM gasket this is part number 1261041. And if I can find a link for these gaskets, I will include them down in the description below. Also, one thing before we go ahead and get this plate installed, I did want to show you the inside of the motor. The motor is looking clean after five or six years of supercharger on here. I don't see any issues from up top. And you guys can see that is the LS9 camshaft down in there. And uh, we installed it a real long time ago. All right, guys, you will see that the valley cover port plate is installed with the vent port as well as the oil pressure sensor. Don't forget to put that in as well. You guys will notice that we have stainless steel hardware on here. I bought all of this new just due to the fact that I know the Edelbrock bolts were pretty crappy. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if it was just because they use like an iron type bolt or something like that. Uh, I'm just not sure why every single one of those bolts froze against the block. Like, I don't have any rhyme or reason. I mean, yes, there's a huge heat producer on top of it. Maybe it was something to do with that. I'm just not 100% sure. So this time I went with stainless steel hardware and then I put anti-seize all the way up the bolt and then under the head. So as you guys will see on some of the bolts, there's actually some anti-seize coming up around the bolt. So hopefully, if I ever have to take this apart with that anti-seize being all the way around, including the head, you know, the under part of the head, we should be good to go. Now these bolts torque down 18 foot pounds and then your oil pressure sensor also torques down 15 foot pounds. So 18 and 15. Now that is gonna be a wrap for today's video. I know you guys might think this was a long video for one little project, a valley vent plate, but guys, I have been fighting this for over two weeks. I literally thought this was going to be maybe a weekend install, but you know, this ended up turning into almost a month long install. I was waiting for parts, I was waiting for bolts, and waiting for time as well. I did go on a vacation in between, you know, when I started this project and when I finished it. But just, it's finally done, and uh, I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't give up. I really thought about it, but you know, just through, I, I, I researched various ways of removing bolts, welding the bolt, welding a nut to it, um, you know, just stuff like that. Using that chemical, we tried to do that. That obviously didn't do anything. And finally, we just took a socket, hammered it on, welded it in. No, I don't know what the exact magic trick was, hammering that socket in, hitting it with a sl small sledgehammer, or welding it, you know, to it, or even just heating up the area with a torch. I just don't know what the magic thing was, but we got it done. And finally we can move back with getting this little heat producer back onto the car. And then we can move on with why we bought this plate. But that's gonna be for a future video. And if you guys wanna see that, you're gonna have to hit that subscribe button. Also, make sure you hit that bell notification button. That way you guys know when these new videos pop up about the next video, the next project, 
the next update, you know, because I think the notification system does work, but if you guys hit that bell button, you'll know when my videos upload. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Also, if you want to help support the channel, click all the links down below and make sure you check out our website, bonecrusherss.com. Thanks guys. Have a great one. Yeah.